Christine Chang, extensive knowledge of Chinese foreign policy, current senior fellow at the Heritage Foundation, uh, with us now. Uh, boy, it feels like the Chinese continue just to get more and more bold in their actions if they're willing to send intelligence operatives into the United States. Well, this has actually been going on for uh, close to a decade now. The Obama administration actually uh, warned China about its uh, these kinds of activities, uh, that Chinese police, Chinese uh, security agents can't just come to the United States and either try to persuade, uh, coerce, or uh, worst of all, kidnap um, Chinese uh, people that the Chinese are interested in. Unfortunately, the Obama administration also chose to send some people back on the argument, well, China claims that they're criminals. And the Chinese learned from that and said, well, these are all criminals. Uh, so naturally, you would want to give those back to us. So this is, um, this is one of a number of things that the Chinese have signaled to the U.S. that, uh, well, we say we're, you, know, you don't have a right to interfere in our internal affairs. That doesn't prevent us from interfering in your internal well, and to that point, the Chinese say that we don't have a right to interfere in their internal affairs, and they make us pay a price if we do it. We haven't made the Chinese pay a price for their behavior and for burning things down and sending intelligence operatives to do the things that you talked about. How much of this is just intelligence? Because if you think about the other parts of what the Chinese are doing, $700 million invested in commercial real estate just last year, 200,000 acres of farmland bought at roughly $2 billion dollars. Uh, they don't necessarily have to do it with force. They can just do it with dollars, right? Oh, the Chinese are very, very comprehensive. They understand that they can do it with dollars. They can do it with, um, you know, pressuring American companies. You want to do business in China, you need to play ball according to our rules. And you see the MBA and others caving in on this. You see this with Confucius Institutes and other efforts to influence American educational institutions. You see this with how the Chinese keep reporters from places like the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times out, but insist that we should treat Xinhua and People's Daily, which are state-run media, as something other than foreign agents. Uh, so they, they, they move hook, uh, rook, uh, pawn, and bishop on the chessboard. It, it, some of my favorite Twitter accounts are the Chinese state media reporters. Uh, Never mind that they're allowed on Twitter, but Twitter isn't allowed in China, and Twitter's just fine with this. But that's a whole, a whole different, another discussion. Speaking of that, a tweet from a Chinese journalist. Part of the Chinese national anthem being censored. Here's a sentence I never thought I'd say. The first line of China's national anthem has been censored on Weibo, which is their version of WhatsApp or iMessage or chatting. Stand up those who refuse to be slaves is the line of the national anthem, it's now been banned after people used it to vent frustration about prolonged lockdowns. How long can the Chinese keep twisting themselves into this pretzel? That's a very important question. Xi Jinping is going into the 20th Party Congress this fall. This will mark, you know, they've already celebrated 100 years of CCP's existence. But this is the one where he is going to stay on as general secretary of the party, essentially overturning everything Deng Xiaoping had laid down. Having massive lockdowns, uh, not just in Shanghai, but uh, in multiple Chinese cities, uh, having rising food prices, having pork shortages, these are not things that he wants to be remembered for as he goes in mm. to do the hard bargaining of saying, you know, leave me in charge for another five years. So yeah. I suspect that they need to get this stuff cleared or certainly off the screens before September, October. Yeah, fa fascinating the intersection of, I, if you want to call it an election, but the party conference in China and then the midterms here uh, in the United States and the domestic political concerns, both of President Biden and then of Xi Jinping. Uh, Dean Zhang, really appreciate it as always. Thanks for being on. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.